Welcome to Season 2, Episode 11 of Monday Mingle. We're here to talk about mental, me, me, mental, hail, mental health and everything else. I'm your host, Savvy Lou Sounds. I can't talk today. Uh, like most days, you know me, you know me. I see people popping into the chat, but I'm reading my script, so I'm not quite on the screen. Hello, Joe. Hello, Gels. All my J's are in here. My lovely J named friends. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I hope you guys are doing all right. I I had an okay day that turned into a really rough day. Um and and then therapy. And here I am. Thank you for shouting out Gels. She is actually making a comeback to streaming. Pew 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 tomorrow um at seven o'clock est so be there or be square you're you're gonna miss some beautiful music if you can't make it hopefully i can make it i have to plan my whole day around it <laughs> which i don't mind i don't mind doing that i do that for people i love <laughs> um but yeah she plays piano she has amazing beautiful original music and she does really good covers really unique covers in my opinion She's a lovely human being, um, but two of my favorite friends are here. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have favorites. Okay, I have favorites. My big fan is on, and I need to I need to fix that. I forgot about that. Um, I don't know how bad it sounds, but it's too loud for me, and it's distracting. So I'm gonna walk over there and let you guys hear me walking over there. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna yell at it. What? <laughs> Yell at the microphone at me. I'll be right over in a minute. Uh, oops, wrong way. Okay. Okay. It is off. I just stepped on some chapstick that fell out of my shorts. That's lovely. Alright, I'm almost back. I, I don't know if you guys can even hear me when I'm far away, but I am. I'm back. My microphone decided to fall. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. Um, if you guys need to lurk, feel free to lurk. I don't mind. My phone just made a sound at me. I don't know what it was. Um, oh, <laughs> now I know what it is. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm sorry I'm half an hour late, you guys. I'm sorry. Um, this won't make a difference to YouTube. We'll see if I ever get motivated to, to get things going on YouTube again. Um, here's the main thing that's keeping me. Um, I wanted to redo the whole thumbnail for everything for season two and make it, like, more professional, or I don't know, more cute, or more branded, I don't know, just something. I wanted to do something to it, and, um, I have, like, zero inspiration <laughs> and thinking of this because i told my therapist like i had a lot of free time ish this weekend not a lot of energy but enough energy to make stuff um even last week i had a, a lot of free time to make stuff but i had zero inspiration to make stuff and i was like hmm so i mentioned that to my therapist today among the other thing that is taking up way too much of my sessions every single week and it's driving me nuts um but she thinks it's important enough to talk about so here we are <laughs> it's probably i mean it is important to talk about because it's what's causing my depression but i don't even i can't even talk about it here <laughs> so that's fun but anyway uh she diagnosed me with um moderate to severe depression mostly severe um today so that was fun um, I've, I've not been not diagnosed with depression in the past. It's happened before, um, with another counselor that, um, was assisting me pro bono for some, some weeks, many, many moons ago, um, who officially diagnosed me with anxiety and depression, um, about six years ago now. Um, and... Anyway, uh, so I have that on top of um, my PTSD slash CPTSD, and uh, yeah, it's fun. It's fun, I guess. I don't know if that's fun. <laughs> I'm just saying it's fun, because 
what else would you say, you know? But anyway, um, I should have started with the news segment, right? Like, boo-doo-doo-doo-doo, some sort of cool music about stuff, blah, 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 blah. In the news today, I have no idea when I'm going to make the sub perks available to everyone else. I don't know what's a good time frame. Is a month too long? Is two weeks too short? It's been, I think, two weeks since I put some of the stuff out um, for my, my subs, um, which aren't many. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm thinking, I think I've decided right now. Oh, two weeks is enough. I'm going to put it out, put two of the things out for everyone else, for everyone, for the whole world today so it'll go live for everyone after after the stream and then i'll i'll try to share it and do all that thing uh and pray that doesn't trigger me and you're free to lurk joe enjoy your lurk enjoy your lurk anyway i'm in a very weird mood all of a sudden that's interesting anyway um <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Podcast is over. Bye. Just kidding. That's the end of the news segment. Boop, 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 boop. Important music or cool stuff. We. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I don't I don't know what to talk about because I feel like I feel like the things on my mind I, I it's not safe for me to talk about it. It's not <laughs> safe for me to talk about it. So I'm like and then part of me just wants to be really goofy and stupid and um it's hard for me to do that when I have nothing to play off of. At least it feels hard for me. Like usually, usually if people are saying random whatever stuff in chat, I'll like start commenting on it and I'll like make my brain go into some weird whatever stupid tangent in the world and I'll be like, eh, yeah, ha ha, you know, like at least that's how it feels. You don't have to unlurk. Stop it. No. <laughs> go rest. <laughs> <laughs> Go relax. <laughs> Just snooze away. To my, I don't know. Voice it says random thing in the house. <laughs> I wish. I don't know. Um, what did you guys eat today? I don't know. I don't remember what I ate today. I don't remember what I had for lunch. Let me think. Mushrooms? What? What is that? That's a cute little emote. Let me look at it. Oh, it is a little mushroom. C A in L A. That's cute. Oh, what an adorable little mushroom! You guys can't see it like I can. YouTube. If you're on YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube, you should be watching live on Twitch. <laughs> I, um, I've oddly, for whatever stupid reason, been addicted to Snapchat filters and taking photos of myself with it on. And I'm like, I'm wondering where it's coming from. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it feels, it feels weird, but also for some dumb reason, it makes me happy. And I'm like, ah, <laughs> I look cute. <laughs> Being a patty with potatoes and earlier, um, sweet and sour thingy. Sweet and sour thingy. Okay. Sounds good. That sounds good. I <sighs> stupidly, um, forgot to tell them to take off the jalapenos on my dinner today. And, um, there, therefore I could not eat it. <laughs> um, and, uh, and then, uh, now I have the runs. So, there you go. Sorry if that's TMI. 
I I've been shitting all night. <laughs> And my stomach is burn and earning, 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 burn and eating the peasants, burn and eating the countryside. Did you guys ever play that game? Um, on home um, or see the video on Homestar Runner. If you haven't, you, you're you're missing out. It's very cute. <laughs> oh no, my heart's racing. What are you doing? Calm down. Stop jumping. Oh my god. <laughs> uh. <laughs> my heart just went. I've been having more and more palpitations the last two weeks. I didn't tell my therapist. Uh, she wants me to probably go on medication if the thing that's causing me massive distress keeps happening. Um, and... While I don't think it's wrong for people to be on medication, <laughs> I very much hate taking pills, and I hate the idea of it, and I'm also scared of all the addiction that runs in my family. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't know if I want to do that. Part of me, though, is like, I wonder if they would like prescribe gummies or something like that, and then I would for the first time experience what it's like to be high, I guess. I don't know. That would be funny. That would be interesting. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Um, like maybe they, maybe, maybe that would work for my PTSD. <laughs> but at the same time, I don't want to be numb about the issue that's causing me issues because I feel like I would then, um, just tolerate it for much longer than I should. Um, and I don't want that. I want the pressure. I want it to almost destroy me so that I can kill it myself. <laughs> that sounds so weird. <laughs> I feel cryptic now. I feel cryptic now. Um, yes, that's that emote right there, Joe, is exactly how my stomach feels. Um, it's exactly like that. In, in flames. It's, it's engulfed in misery right now. And it was already, like, all weekend, I was bloated and bleh, and I was like, whatever. Um, but, but yeah, yeah, um, I don't, I don't remember much of the weekend. <laughs> as, as with the last four months, it's, it's a haze of confusion and mystery. <laughs> Except for certain things. Certain things stand out a little bit if I think about it hard enough. And then I'm like, I don't want to think about this. <laughs> like, I don't want to think about this because it either makes me feel oo-woo. It's stuff that makes me feel all oo-woo. And then I get sad about that stuff. Um, or it's the thing that's causing me distress. And then I'm like, I want, I want to explode something. Like, explode capitalism. <laughs> and and, and uh, I want all my friends to stop suffering in the same way that I'm suffering and I'm like Murp. <laughs> so it, I don't know I don't know if that's what's causing my lack of of brain cognition the fact that there's a lot of this that I I can't talk about on here um because it's not safe for me and then um and then when my friends are around to talk about it, I'm like, I don't want to talk about it. It's I'm I'm not dealing with it right now, so it's it's far removed and away from me, and I'm free in this moment. I don't want to talk about it. So it's <laughs> it's very weird and annoying. It's so annoying. <laughs> um I feel like my levels are weird. Can you guys hear me okay? Like it's staying in the green, so I feel like I'm very quiet. Um, I f oh, okay. I did the opposite of what I meant to do earlier. That's, that, okay. <laughs> I thought I'd turn my mic up and it actually turned it down. So there we go. This should be, this should be good. <laughs> this should be good now. Um, at least 20 minutes of the podcast is me mumbling. So I've been... 
um, tasked with homework that is overwhelming. Um, thankfully, my, my therapist didn't ask about it today um, because the, the looming annoying thing took up, you know, 90% of the session again. And I'm like, fuck this. Um, but Gels knows, Gels knows what the, what the homework is and it's overwhelming. And all weekend when I, I felt like it's weird cause I've been uninspired to do anything. Um, but I've had the itch, the itch to make stuff all week, all week. It's been like, Oh, I really want to draw. <laughs> and then I sit there and I think about, you know, setting up everything, uh, excuse me, to go and do the drawings. That's, that's the jalapeno speaking again. Hello, jalapeno. Anyway, he's like, hello, <laughs> my juice is where you're in your food. Anyway, onwards, onwards. Um, so I think about, you know, either pulling out my like drawing pad thing, which I don't even know where it is. Where the fuck is it? Oh, okay. I know where it is now. That might help me next time. Well, I think about pulling that out and then finding my pencil and my eraser and then trying to sit down and make something. And then I'm like, nothing's going to happen, is it? <laughs> Nothing's going to happen if I do that because I don't know if it's like last time I felt this way and I sat there and tried to draw it. Nothing came of it because like I, I completely drew a blank. Like I was just like blank paper. That's cool. Let me let me draw a girl. I don't, I don't know what I want the girl to look. I I I. I lines no nope. eyeball no nope. uh, mm, uh it's gone it's gone the de the desire to create something is gone and then <laughs> I'm like okay so not not on not on paper that's fine that's fine um so then I sit there the next time I get the itch and I'm like I'll just I'll I'll do I'll do something digital and just practice and I'll stream it and it's gonna be awesome because I'll be streaming it and stuff. And then I'm like, oh, but, um, I kind of want music on and, uh, I don't really listen to my own music and, hmm, maybe, I don't know. Let me just plug in the drawing pad and then I'll, I'll like do something, whatever on my own. I don't have to stream it. I don't want to listen to my own music. I'm kind of tired of my own music. I'd rather, I'd rather be making more music and then I can listen to that instead. And like, maybe I should make like a meditative, like track or something something really mystical and like that draws energy from the universe or i don't know some cosmic meditative thing that i can like put on repeat and blah blah blah, blah. and then like i i open up you know i set up and everything and then for whatever reason i'm like okay while i'm like setting up i'm just gonna watch a friend's stream uh let's see who's streaming and then i'll just sit there and be like huh People are streaming. What did I want to do again? Huh. I don't know. Something about drawing something. Music. I don't know. Uh, stuff. Stuff. Mm hmm This friend's funny. And then I'll, like, just zone out into nothingness. And it'll be like my brain turns into an ethereal cloud of nothing. And I I can't have conversations, even though I have the energy for it. And I might, I might make jokes at whatever is going on, whatever I'm watching. Or I might just stare at everyone else talking. And then I'm just like, huh. Hmm. Yeah, and then I go into the uwu realm again for a minute, and then I'm like, I'm tired of this feeling. <laughs> I should work on my homework. Yeah, maybe that'll help with this uwu ugh, feeling. Uh -huh. Go do the homework. Do the homework. And then I go back into the whole cycle of like, oh, um, that means that I have to pull out something to do stuff with, and then, um, yeah things.
things have to happen. And then I have to think of things. And then I think that part of my soul is dead. <laughs> it's just weird. And it's just weird. So that was me most of the weekend. Um, my friend Sarah Jazz has been streaming a lot um, this weekend. She's been like, I'm bored. <laughs> and I'll just sit there and watch and like make jokes um, at, at in general. <laughs> um just because I'm trying to get her to laugh, because I like trying to do that with my friends <laughs> when they're streaming. <laughs> and, uh, oh no, my fan died. Oh god, I gotta plug it in. Number one fan, don't die. I need you. I need you. But, um, she's actually streaming right now. She's, she's really cute and adorable. But, um, she, she, I met her many moons ago. I think two years ago. Be no three years ago damn it's been a long time huh i don't remember it's been a long time anyway it's it's been a way way long time i met her and because of her i met um rosemary teal she used to do a show called um it was a podcast as well um and it was called Mus music Ex exposed musicians exposed something like that um, but she would interview musicians and like ask them all sorts of stuff about streaming and like where they come from and all stuff. It was really cool. And back then I didn't feel like, um, they would consider me enough of a musician or like popular enough or whatever, like a good enough following to help them out. Um, cause it was her and her partner, um, her co-stream co-host person silence um who's also a musician they were both hosting it and whatever and um they asked my friend steve to be on there and i think he never went through with it because he he struggles with imposter syndrome like i do and he was like oh. and he's like basically they like set it up and like scheduled it and then last minute he was like no and then he also had like computer issues at the same time so he like he had a good out for all his anxiety about it and he was like no no um and stuff and like i i like i never felt like i would ever be you know i guess i don't I like using the words good enough cuz that's not a feeling i have it's more like huh it's it's a hard it's hard to put it into words the feeling i have but it's more like um i feel i always felt then like too insignificant for for even like it like cuz they were like tell us if you want to be on on there <laughs> kind of thing and part of me felt like um i'm too insignificant and untalented of a musician to be on the show um and it and then there was also this fear of like i would be on the show and have all these expectations of growth or whatever and then um when they wouldn't come true this is how my brain would go um when they when those things wouldn't happen i would be very disappointed in myself and then give up and then just disappear <laughs> from the face of of twitch and just be like i knew it more like uh, I, I had this fear that if I even tried and anything bad would happen, um, then it would, it would be, it would, it would be my brain's perfect excuse for me to give up on my dreams and just be like, fuck it, <laughs> just toss it out the window, you know, and just be like, Pfft. so I was like, I'm not even going to go there. I'm not even going to go there. Um, so I feel like that's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of things I struggle with, with, um, risk taking. This is why I'm not a risk taker. Cause I feel like, I feel like, um, the stakes are too high. You know, it's like, um, I don't, I don't feel failure, but I fear what my brain would do to me with that failure. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense at all at all hey spidey welcome welcome mr number one gifter look at you look at you um 
When I started my channel, that grew an audience. I didn't think of it that way, but when dealing with music, I just can't think that I'm good enough. That's the thing too with me. Like, um, I was actually showing my friend, um, old depressed gamer, um, some of my drawings, which I never talk about my drawing. Um, but like, I never talk about my, about my art on, on the stream or anywhere close to my stream, unless like someone happens to like, um, mention it or whatever. Thank you for, for shouting him out, Joe. Um, but just so you guys can see, um, let me, let me close all this stuff. Um, and this, I don't need that one. Anyway, um, this logo right there flashing, I made that. I drew that. Um, this, this whole background thing, I drew that. <laughs> I drew that. Um, what else? Where's, uh, where's the other thing? Where's it? Oh, this one here. My logo, my, my official logo for, um, oops, my official logo for, for my brand. Um, I drew that too. So I drew all these things. <laughs> um, but I don't talk about it. So he, my friend ODG had no idea, um, how much I draw or anything. I think like most of my friends on Twitch don't know how much I draw at all. Um, or how much I always loved it. Um, part of it is, uh, some already years ago, seven years ago, I had a severe injury with one of my old jobs, um, that caused tendonitis in both my shoulders and, um, like my scoliosis gets irritated by it and it gets irritated by my scoliosis and on, on and on. But anyway, because of that, um, for many, many moons, I have not been able to draw. So, um, I would get the itch to draw and then I would try and then after 15 minutes, I would be in severe pain for like weeks. Um, that's slowly been getting better. Um, and I can actually draw for an extended period of time again. But anyway, needless to say, part of it was like, I, I know that my skills have atrophied, <laughs> you know, because I haven't been able to draw the way it used to. Like seven years ago, I would make something, you know, super complicated and detailed within two hours. Um, and just be like, here, <laughs> we, um, like start to finish. And, and that was like an average day, not even like a good day, you know, <laughs> um, where I was super proud of like what I did. And I used to paint and stuff too. Um, but I had more time in college and stuff like that. Um, to like set up a whole day for it like because it would take me like a certain amount of time to set everything up and have like a space and a spot for it and all that stuff and then i would paint and then i had to make sure i ate before because if i didn't eat i would get dizzy from the fumes because i neglected myself from eating while i was painting because i had to be like i had to get to a stopping point or or i would feel like severe distress about it. So I had to make sure I ate beforehand and all this stuff. But anyway, um, I would have a whole other day afterwards set up to like clean up and like make sure that I felt completely finished. Cause when I painted, I would like to, to go until I felt like I was done and then leave it there for at least a day or whatever and be like, am I truly done? yes or no and like add a little bit or whatever do stuff with it so anyway anyway it partially was it was a whole like i can't do it the way i used to anymore kind of thing because of pain because of time because of whatever but the other whole weird part of it that i've never really talked about <laughs> is that um growing up um my art was the only thing that ever got attention um both from my family and, um, well, partially, because mom's always, like, everything I do, she noticed. Um, so that's just how mom was, um, because she's a good mom. But, um, anyway, um, but, you know, like, it, my friends and everything, like, the only thing they ever noticed, um, were super complimented. And even some of, like, even some of my, um current Twitch friends who did know about the drawing and art, um, 
like that was the only thing they were super enthusiastic about when they would like when i would share um they'd be like oh blah, blah, blah. so it made me feel like a really shitty crappy musician um because like in my mind i used it as like proof that like oh since i don't get this reaction from people for my music and my like you know, the songs are right or whatever, my singing in general, um, that means it's shit. And, you know, the art that I, even I can see, and even I'm proud of, <laughs> um, gets all this like laudation or whatever. <laughs> I don't know what the right word is, but you know, um, uh, it gets all this praise and whatever. Um, that's, the obvious like only skill I have and I'm an idiot for ever wanting to do this thing that actually makes me feel a lot more deeply um in general so I don't know if that makes sense to Spidey and what you said or like relates to it um but like but yeah like uh, everything centered around my music and my value in music or as a musician um i struggle i struggle with it like super super much and it's weird because like in my head i'm like well i'm a trained vocalist so you know whatever <laughs> it's like um obviously i have training i i'm not a trained artist or drawer or anything um but, like, the amount of skill I have, which I still think, looking at other artists who I think are 20 million thousand times more talented than I am, because they've dedicated more energy and time to it, and have more variety in in what they actually create, you know, they have more flexibility, um, I would kind of call it more genres, I don't know, um, but they, they have, like, more, they're more rounded, in their art and what they make um than what i see that i can do right so <laughs> um like even though i have that like perspective because i feel like with anything that you're good at you know how much you're not good at and so that's how you you gauge yourself and what you want to push yourself to learn more or you just kind of like know you know where you're at in, in general in the world it's not like about being good or bad or whatever you just know you know that you're not like a kindergartner level in skill wise but you know you're not like leonardo da vinci or rembrandt or monet or dali you know like you know you're not one of those <laughs> you're like okay i'm not that but i'm also not that and then you get like a a normal humble sense of like your skill level you know with with anything you make right but then with some things at least with my music i have that little gremlin that's like even when i can logically sit there and be like okay i was trained like i'm a trained vocalist and i know how to read music if i try hard enough it, i can get it back like i used to know a lot more and i used to know how to compose stuff that was super complicated or whatever um compared to the average person <laughs> um i i learned like six different wind instruments and i learned at least one uh, string instrument for a whole year um i dedicated like two semesters to violin you know so it's like i'm skilled enough in music to catch up and learn other things and gain other you know skills with it and whatever but i can sit there and logically sit like list all those things and be like yeah you know i'm not awful but then anything like my brain will take any excuse to be like you're complete shit <laughs> like no matter what and like it, it makes it 20 million times harder and like more triggering for me to share like a song I make or a YouTube video with one of my songs in it or SoundCloud or whatever um, to share it and not get any feedback at all or or even if I get good feedback I'm just like like my my brain will like immediately like 
discredit it and be like, oh, you're just saying that. Or, oh, of course, because I'm trained. And it's just, it's so weird. And it's so sticky. <laughs> um, my music is very close to me. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think like people who, who write music, it's always very close to them, you know? Um, and people will tell me, you know, like, you're very bold to like share your originals, but for me, I'm like, well, I'm, if this is how my brain tells me, <laughs> you know, it's like, well, I'm such a shitty musician that I, I can't do covers, you know, cause I can't play guitar well enough to, to do it. And I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to learn guitar that much because I'm, I, I see myself and I identify myself as a vocalist and I would much rather have like someone who's actually proficient at guitar or piano or anything, <laughs> anything that could accompany me. I'd rather have them do that part and they do their thing and then I, I be free to do my thing. And so I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to take any of my energy and time and dedication away from my voice and my lyrics and stuff to learn an instrument <laughs> that I don't like. I love guitar. I think it's beautiful. I love my guitar. I think it's wonderful, but it's not the same intimacy I have with my voice and my lyrics and all that stuff. It's just not the same. <laughs> it's just like, uh, I'm like, this is cool and it's pretty, but it's not, it's not where my heart is, you know? So anyway, I'm just like, I just don't, I don't want to do all that just so I can get, you know, organic views or whatever. Like anyone who streams music on Twitch will tell you, and even not even, not even on Twitch, not even on Twitch, like any busker, anyone who goes out and does live gigs, they will tell you that if you play music that people recognize, you will get a bigger crowd. You'll get more people, you'll get more, you know, whatever fans, etc. They'll somehow recognize your talent more than if you play some ambiguous thing they've never heard, you know? Um, because and it's a natural thing. Um, the brain latches on to things that are familiar, you know. So I know that by doing originals, um, it's a much more steep, <laughs> like, climb to even get more people or whatever um, to reach the audience that is meant to hear your stuff. It's much more steep. It's much harder. Um to reach the people that you're meant to connect with and et cetera. Um, but for me, uh, that's, that's the only time I feel fully and completely like myself with my music. Um, when I do a cover, I'm just like, Oh, this is cool. Um, but it doesn't feel like me. It doesn't feel, it doesn't feel real. It feels like fake. Um, and even even when I deeply, deeply identify with the song and really, really connect with the song, it still doesn't feel like me. <laughs> um, like that was my struggle with with all the opera songs I learned and covered in, in school. Um, I'd be like, oh, this one's cute or whatever. Uh, a lot of the times, 99% of the times, they were love songs and I'd never been in love. Um, I'd have way too many crushes. Um, <laughs> but it was just like, mm, eh, I don't know how to feel these things. And even if I try to understand them, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't, it just, I couldn't reach that pit part of my soul to pull out the emotion. And I feel like when it's my music, I can. And that's the only reason that I like I think mean, that's the main reason why I like doing my originals and not covers and, you know, I'm just, I don't know. I don't know if that makes me less of a musician or whatever, because like most of my musician friends, they can, they can still emote through someone else's work, you know, they can still, I mean, especially instrumentalists, I feel like, 
um, most of the instrumentalists I know don't don't really always write other people's or like write their own thing just to perform like they they mostly you know uh interpret music that's the thing with music if you don't really fully vibe with it it just feels weird to do it yeah and like my songs are the only ones i fully vibe with even when i love the song like i can love it with my whole heart <laughs> and i'll just be like cool cool like i can have fun singing along um but never never performing it myself it just feels different i feel disconnected i happen to love the fuck out of doing covers but i would hate doing only covers yeah see like i don't know if that makes me a fake musician or not maybe it does i don't know like i've never gotten gratification out of doing covers I'm re remixing a song right now, and it feels nice because I vibe with it. I love making my own music as well. Different strokes for different folks. <laughs> sorry, you say, you say strokes, and my mind instantly went to the gutter. I'm sorry, you guys. I am sorry. <laughs> la la la. <laughs> la la la. La la. Anyway. Um, I don't even know why I started talking about all that. Why did I start talking about that? I don't know. I don't know. See, you you say something that makes me think of kinky shit and I'm all over. I'm, I'm done. I've derailed. Good night, everyone. It was a nice podcast. Bye. <laughs> I wouldn't make it fake since your own music is music too. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I don't know. I hear people, I hear like famous musicians talk about music and they're like, I just can't stop doing it. <laughs> no matter what. <laughs> and the way they study, they study other people and like their craft and everything. I just like, I'm like, I, I can't, my brain can't brain that way. And I feel weird about it. Like, like there was, um, there were these, these two guitarists that this other guitarist, <laughs> this sounds so weird. Okay. So there's a series that, um, is on YouTube. Um, it's like called Corey Wong and the Wong notes and Corey Wong is a rhythm guitarist. Um, he does, I think he does mostly like funk jazz. I don't know about genres that much. I'm not good at talking about... I I didn't learn that stuff, okay? So I don't know. But it, it, he has cool music, right? So I learned about him because of a friend of mine who's a guitarist. Um, so uh, he had this... He has this, like, show on YouTube that comes out every week. He hasn't, he hasn't brought anything out for a couple weeks, so I think that's part of, like, my lack of inspiration, because I, I was, like, vibing to all his videos, like, for, like, months ever since I heard of it. Um, having major lag on my end of stream. Oh, no, is that everyone? I'm not dropping any frames. Testing, testing. One, two, one, two. Test, test, test. Oh no! Is it everyone? Likely just me. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, the internet has been awful here. Oh, that sucks. I wonder if it's like heat or whatever. Or I don't know if it's hot where you're at. I know UK is having like record highs right now, uh, from what I hear, and I'm worried about my friend over there. Um, so yeah, uh, sorry. I'll, I'll keep going with the story unless someone else tells me there's lag. With wired connection. Yeah, I have Ethernet as well. Um, so anyway, Corey Wong, he puts out these videos, these shows. Um, <laughs> I don't think you cut our internet off. <laughs> I, 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 I'm saying sorry because I don't want to like have you missed the story or like 
ignore your needs because I'm trying to tell a story. It makes me very distressed <laughs> to ignore people's needs. I'm sorry. Um, so that's why I'm saying I'm sorry. Uh, I don't, I don't want to dismiss you and be like, fuck you. Like, who cares if you can hear me or not? I'm just going to keep talking about what the fuck I wanted to talk about. Like, that makes me feel awful. <laughs> So that's why, that's why I was saying I'm sorry. Um, so on with, on with the story. <laughs> Corey Wong, he put out this video and he had these two guitarists on, right? Um, and I don't remember their names cause I suck at names, but they were, they were both good at different things. And like for the first half of the video, I was vibing with everything they were saying. You know, I was like, oh, this is so cool. Cause Corey Wong was all like, uh, different guitarists have different strengths and da, da 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 and I was like yes all musicians are like this all of us like do different shit <laughs> or whatever you know like I can't reiterate or articulate whatever the fuck was going on in my brain one because it's been so many weeks two because it was so vague and uh, it's just the gist of it it's just the feeling of it that I walk away with right so I was all inspired and I was like yes Yes. Wonderful. And then they started talking about technical shit and like all like, like they started asking questions like, um, who do you think, like, what do you think your voice sounds like? And da da da. And like, how do you think you found it? And they're like, oh, well, yeah, you listen to all this stuff and you're like, oh, I kind of sound like this. And you're like, oh yeah. So-and-so like when you hear him playing, you always know uh, what he sounds like, and that's his sound, and that's how you get your own sound, and blah, 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 all this stuff, all this stuff, and I'm like, I've never thought of music this way, <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know if I have the capacity to think of music this way. Hey, Sam, welcome. How are you? Welcome to the Savvy Lou Sound stream. I'm talking about random music shit. Um, so, you know, I'm like, I, I don't think I have the capacity to even understand music this way and like I'm like I, I I couldn't pick out a different type of rhythm and tell you oh this is an afro cuban rhythm or this is like oh this is very much funk or uh yeah this is so and so and this is that and that and like I'm like part of me is like is it because I only got a little bit of music history thank you so much for shouting him out um or is it I'm like is it because like most of my brain is mush right now because I've been so triggered so often for so many months. Or I'm like, is it because like I've been in survival mode for whatever amount of years and all this other, you know, all this other stuff isn't important or my, my brain says it's not important. So it just kind of shoved it all off of like a cliff somewhere and in, in, <laughs> in my mind and was like, fuck it <laughs> you know like I, I don't know I can't tell if it's because I ever knew these things or if I because I never knew these things or if it's because I, I I never had the capacity to know these things I, I don't know I don't know I feel like if I heard baroque music I would be like yeah I know what that is I can't tell you why I know what it is but I know what it sounds like <laughs> you know um uh I, I, I like people like people know like a million different genres of rock and I'm just like what <laughs> you know or like uh like my friend could click who, who's also a musician here on t on twitch he'll be like oh yeah um what do you guys think I sound like you know because I'm putting out an album on spotify um what are the artists do I remind you of and I'm like I don't know. You sound like you. Like, <laughs> what do you mean? What other artists? And he's like, people tell me I sound like Tom Petty. And I'm like, I think I've heard one of his songs. I don't know why you, I don't know why people say you sound like him because your voice is different. Uh, is it because you both have a guitar and you sing and what? <laughs> so I'm just like, uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> You know, like I can, I can, I can listen to something and be like, yeah, that's jazz, but I can't be like, oh, this jazz sounds like so-and-so and you over there, you sound just like so-and-so and blah, blah, blah. Like I can't, I can't, I can't. And I'm just like, after I heard of that, I was just like, 
Maybe, maybe. I mean, it was another excuse for my brain to be like, you suck at music and you're not a real musician. <laughs> my second favorite band is Tool, and they're very well known for their time signatures. I know fuck all about that, though. <laughs> See, I've heard that, um, like, my friend who's a drummer, um, he he's all like, oh, yeah, like, metal has, like, complicated time signatures and da, 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 da. and he, he goes into all this stuff on his stream the other day and I was just like uh-huh uh uh-huh uh -huh. I don't know <laughs> I'm just like I don't, I don't know I don't know like like my friend uh my one friend is like oh this song is both in minor and major at the same time and I'm like what how, how do you <laughs> How do you know this? <laughs> like, I don't understand. I feel like an idiot. I feel like I don't know anything. I I just I just la 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 la. And I know how to I I know how to make all the muscles do the la 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 la. <laughs> and then I'm like, I have words, and I make them go with the la la laws. And then I grab my guitar, and there's a feeling. <laughs> And I, I, I used feeling to make a blargy blarg to go with the blah 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 and la la las, and that's me as a musician. And it just feels like this big, this big gist of it. <laughs> and people are like, "What genre of music do you play?" I'm like, "Fuck all I know. <laughs> I don't know." What the fuck do I know? I it's me. It's me. It's whatever the fuck I am. I don't know who I am either. <laughs> I'm just I'm savvy, okay? And that's what my music sounds like, okay? Is that good enough for you? Oh no, because you don't know who I am? Because you're a stranger on the internet? Okay. Alright, that makes sense. I'm just gonna sit over there now. Or over in that weird universe corner <laughs> it looks like stars and swirlies i'm just gonna sit there and and be me doing the la la laws and i don't know <laughs> like, i don't know i don't know how to describe myself i don't know how to describe my music i don't even know how to describe my art <laughs> Except that it mimics anime, because I loved anime growing up. And I, I, I would look at Sailor Moon and be like, I'm going to draw this. Yeah. I'm going to draw this, but in my own way. And yeah, there it is. There's a girl with Sailor Moon eyes, but her hair is different. Ha. <laughs> and I was like, eh. And, uh, I mean, that's how we all develop our skills in general. You know, you copy, um, you echo what you love, uh, you echo what you take in. And, uh, I guess, I don't know, in the end, <laughs> in the end, there's so many musicians that just play by ear and it doesn't make them any less of a musician. Anyone else who, who, who knows all the logic and all the analytical stuff and all the you know, all the, all the technical theory, aural theory and everything, um, doesn't make you less of a musician. And that's, that's something that I struggled with a lot in music school. Cause like, there were all these, all these people everywhere around me that had been taught all these technical things and all these complicated things ever since like elementary school. <laughs> And here I was, like, uh, during middle school, I was, I was taught rote singing, which is basically you hear something and you parrot it back over and over and over again. You hear the song or whatever, and you sing it back. <laughs> and that's how, that's how I learned to sing in middle school. <clears throat> and also how I learned to sing in elementary school. And then I get to college um, after many, many years of not doing anything musical in, in the, in the academia world. And, uh, they were like, 
here's this piece of paper with dots and, and lines on it. And uh, it means music. And I was like, huh? Uh-huh. I, I, I heard about this. I'm musically illiterate, but I heard about this. And then they, they, they gave me a few muscles to, like, go with it. And it worked for a little bit. Um, but everything else was overwhelming. <laughs> and it was like, um, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But a lot of them there, uh, like, especially people not in the education part of the music school, um, they, they would treat you like subhuman almost. <laughs> if you, if you, if you weren't that great at theory, um, especially in oral theory, they would be like, oh, oh, oh. or piano class. Piano class was a huge challenge for me because I, it was so much and like, I, I couldn't get my fingers to coordinate, even though I would, I would know what I wanted them to do, but it, it was a lot of thinking that I, I didn't have the capacity to do while I was starving uh, to death because I couldn't afford food. <laughs> um, it was it was a lot. It was a lot. Um, but you know, all my all, all everyone else who had been taking music forever and the actual reading of the of the sheet music was like second nature to them. They were just learning the muscle memory and the and the um you know the the coordination of the fingers. I feel like a lot of vocalists at my school had that issue. Some schools don't do a great job of that at the younger ages. Not y'all's fault. Yeah. Um, but a lot of instrumentalists take it out on us like we're just we're just dumb. <laughs> and it's like, no, we just we have a lot of like music education that we didn't get that you guys did get. We would just help each other out at my school though. Yeah, I had um I had a oral theory tutor. He was he was a really good friend. Um and I I'm I get sad because I see his posts on Facebook and stuff to this day and he's like really down about stuff. Um and I'm just like I remember that back in music school when he was helping me learn music and he was very very compassionate to me and very kind to me. I was always like, "Man, He's going to have like an amazing career and he's, he's so talented. Um, because he, he was a comp major, composition major. Um, and he, he knew so much, he knew so much. And, um, like, I don't know what happened in his life that, you know, I thought when I saw him <laughs> and all he knew, I was just like, dude, this guy's going to be, you know, a super amazing, famous composer, you know, in 10 years or whatever. And now he's just sad on Facebook. And I, I don't mean that to be like, oh, his life sucks. He's a loser. I just mean like, it sucks how, how much the world like, uh, drags down creative people um it makes it hard for us to to make a living it makes it hard for us to survive even like music and art isn't valued in the world like something that's worth it because you can't mass produce it the way you can uh a lot of other stuff you know um we don't fit into capitalism, so capitalism kind of just lets us starve and go crazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh and and that makes me sad. Like his situation makes me sad, not him as a person. And I'm just like we deserve we deserve better for ourselves. And I I mean that's why I started my YouTube channel uh Like, not that I think I'm, I'm valuable or anything or wise or whatever, but it always meant a lot to me to support other musicians in every single part of their, 
walk in life, other musicians and other artists, other creative people, because I know for a fact that we don't fit into this society and the system the way we're meant or the way they want us to like it it literally crushes your spirit um and i wanted to be something that like inspired people to to live out of the box <laughs> um but the more i'm like stuck in the box of like struggling to survive struggling to eat struggling to have a home struggling in a job that uh kind of drowns my spirit every single day uh the more i feel like i'm failing everyone else that i care about um not just mom not just my bunny but all, all my friends that i want to see them succeed anyone who might come after me many moons later um because, I mean, that's why I wanted to be a teacher. I wanted to to nurture people who, who are up and coming in the world that have that, that creative mind, um, that creativity, and not let them fall into uh, the same patterns of, you know, the system that we're in, especially in the inner city, because so many kids are taught that all they're worth is being in gangs or selling drugs and dying um, because that's all they see and it's even harder if you if you don't fit into you know whatever cog of the world that makes it easy for you to, to fit into a corporate job and be okay with that and just you know suck it up and be there um, or, like, if, if the world tells you that you don't even have value because of the color of your skin, um, it's even worse. So many people in the inner city are, uh, you know, people of color. <laughs> uh, and we have an ad going on, so I'm sorry, I'm crying. We, I could cry through the ad. Uh, I'm going to wait for the ad to end and catch up on chat <laughs> um, in 19 seconds there. So 15, 14, 13. Um, I, I missed some chat. So let me catch up with chat and stuff. Um, high school choir taught me jack shit about anything. <laughs> That happens a lot, unfortunately. Not to discount the work I put in, but I got very, very lucky being able to support myself with music-related things. Thank you for the putting my music out there, Joe. You're so kind. <laughs> um, right place, right time, kind of thing. Yeah, and that's that's the thing. Uh, so many, so many people have that right place, right time, kind of thing, and. Someone else was talking about this. I don't remember where or who it was, but like they were they were mentioning how like people who are successful for like for example with something like YouTube, um, they usually have someone else like supporting them through through it, you know, and a lot of people aren't honest about it. Um, they'll be like, oh, it's a lot of hard work and I put in a lot of hours and I this and that and da 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 da, um, et cetera, et cetera. But they neglect to tell you, oh, I was lucky enough to still live with my parents who were lucky enough or privileged enough to actually have money to support me and not have to, you know, struggle themselves to feed the whole family. <laughs> um, or, you know, I had my partner, uh, my, you know, spouse who, um, you know, was okay to take on the, the burden, the financial burden of the whole home, um, and be the only breadwinner for whatever amount of time, um, until I could, you know, make something of my channel or my Instagram or my Twitch or, you know, et cetera, um, yeah, a lot of people don't 
talk about that. Um, and they're like, you too can do it. And it's like, yeah, but it's not that easy for everyone. Um, and even, even with, even when everything lines up perfectly, there's still this weird factor of variables where you have to be in the right time in the right place. Um, and then also have the right time, the right things to like continue the, you know, say you, you get some random thing that happens and all of a sudden you're, vi you're viral and your, your views or whatever go from like one to two people to like 10 million or whatever, all of a sudden, and you like blossom overnight. Like some people get that. And then all of a sudden something will happen to their mental health or to their situation or whatever. Um, and, or they'll get burnt out or whatever. And then it all crashes down and they're back to like zero or like halfway of what they used to have. And then, you know, like they disappear or, or like it gets to their head and then people are sick of them or, you know, like it's, it's so, there's so many different things with like the creative genre in general of field of career that can happen. Um, and, uh, Right, people always conveniently <laughs> leave that part out when it applies. And connections, those can really depend on time and place too. Yep, very much. They can also depend on time and place. Like, like uh, my friend Fern, who's an amazing musician, super talented. Um, she wouldn't even have been able to get partnered if it wasn't for this, this random person who rated her at the right time the right place she was in right right time right place got this huge raid from um the guy whose name i can't remember because i suck um but i think joe knows the story like you know this this super famous person raided her and so like she was able to get bumped in bumped up enough to make partner and all this stuff um and now she's she's struggling you know she's struggling to make it and she's struggling with with her self-worth and everything because of it and it's like like this world like this whole system pits us against each other instead of like us being able to support one another as a community as like people who understand how our minds work how how like being stuck in these normal jobs stifles our like spirit and like breaks it even like if you're if you're stuck in that long enough it breaks your spirit and then you give up you don't even care anymore like because your dreams are just shattered your your whole your whole self image or your whole like sense of self is just shattered and ripped away from you if you're if you're in the wrong place and for long enough you know and it, it takes a lot of support from people like you and support from family who family and friends who care about you enough to support your dream and push for your dreams like so many of us have like neglectful families that couldn't care less <laughs> you know um how much you love music or how much you love art or whatever, like, uh, so many of us don't have that, you know? Um, and that, that's something that hurt me a lot. Um, when I was like trying to do live gigs by myself, cause I would see, I would see younger people. Um, usually like I was like late twenties or whatever. Um, mid to late twenties trying to, be out there and everything. Um, and I would see like a 16 year old girl or like an 18 year old kid or guy or whatever, you know, various, various ages of people, um, who were very much, obviously they were like still in college or not even in college, still in high school or whatever, going out to these same, uh, open mics or, you know, whatever, and you would see their parents there recording it for them or their friends there. Um, 
like I had friends um, before I like before I even accepted I was a musician. I had these friends who like they were in bands or whatever, and I would be there and I would be like taking pictures for them and like recording their you know their gigs or whatever. And they had all of them had their parents like supporting them, like taking them there, buying them stuff, or you know like. Um, basically like even before YouTube, like even making it as a, as a like creative person in like the way we used to, you know, when, when you did tours as a musician, when you did art shows as an artist and all that stuff, um, and it wasn't all online, you still had friends and family like supporting you and, you know, they had people who were like, oh, I see you haven't, like, worked on anything for a while. Is everything okay? Or, you know, you had someone checking in on you. And you had someone, like, pushing you when you didn't think you could make it. And not everyone has that, you know? Um, and not everyone has the strength to find it within themselves either. Um... And no one talks about that, you know, no one talks about that ever. Um, like, that's what hurt the most for me. Um, and I, I hated that I felt jealous. I hated that I felt like really small. And it made me want to disappear because I thought, I don't have anyone here helping me. That means... I'm not worth it. That means my music isn't worth it. And when I started streaming and I, I saw like very minimal numbers, um, I would go back to that feeling, that same place of like feeling stupid because I was even trying and feeling like I'm putting my whole family's um, stability and security at risk because of some stupid dream uh but it's not a stupid dream it's it's me it's who i am it's my whole heart it's everything i care about it's everything that makes me feel alive <laughs> and it's it's hard it's hard if you don't if you don't have like a whole, um, a whole community of people supporting you. It's really hard, and it's a struggle. And um, I never, I never wanted anyone else to go through that. Um, I never wanted anyone else to feel that way. So, like that's it's why it's super important for me to like, you know, subscribe to my friends if I can or you know, support them by being there, um, and, like, push them to keep going and tell them they're doing a good job and everything that I would have wanted my dad to do, you know, that sort of thing. It made me feel nice when I saw one of my audience members became famous in the YouTube scene. I always remember how hard they worked and how much they deserved it. Just remember that those famous individuals could have been in the exact same situation you're in. And that's fine. Like, I understand that. Um, I always see that. Um, but a lot of, like, what distresses me every day when, um, when I see, uh, like... <laughs> How little, how little, uh, reach I have or whatever <laughs> is, um, I think of, of, of my friends who are in the same place I am too. And I'm like, they deserve to be seen. Um, they deserve to be heard. And I don't, I don't have the power I wish I had to be like, Hey, Go check out Jells. She's amazing. And then all of a sudden she has like 20 million people. 
<laughs> you know, like checking out her music and and her stuff and be like, oh man, I was so right, you know. Or um, you know, when when my friend Rosemary didn't have a um, she didn't have a water heater when I met her uh, because she couldn't afford it, and uh, I can you know post a tweet somewhere and be like, hey, <laughs> my friend needs a new water heater. Let's, you know, put in all this stuff. Uh, you know, like, let's get together and, uh, and, um, help her get a water heater. <laughs> you know, I don't have that. I don't have that. Um, and I mean, I know why I don't have it, but it, it hurts every time I think about it. Um, because I, I don't want my friend Rosemary drowning in a corporate job while, while her real dreams, like, disappear, um, while she doesn't have the energy to do it. Um, and yeah, like, just like you guys are saying, every little bit helps. Um, and I, I, like, try to tell myself that every day. Um, and that's part of what makes me keep pushing on and uh keep going because um if i give up i'm not just giving up on me i'm giving up on everyone i care about um and it's not just small and my bunny it's it's all of you guys too um and i i appreciate you guys for coming by and saying hi and listening to my music because i never had anyone who did that for me growing up and I never felt like I deserved it I'm sorry you guys I'm crying <laughs> and I hate crying but um it just it it makes a huge difference and uh I just appreciate you guys uh, that's all I'm trying to say, I guess. And there's a reason why I appreciate it. Um. <laughs> oh, I didn't know you were getting any followers from me. That's so cute. It makes me happy. Um. Yeah, it's it's cool when uh I get random followers when I'm not even online. <laughs> It'll like where the fuck did this come from? <laughs> like who is this and it's because um you know my friends are shouting me out it's like oh but now we're here to remind you you do deserve it thank you i appreciate you guys um and it's it's so hard for me to explain how much i appreciate you and it's probably because i i start crying and then i'm like oh fuck i'm crying and now my sinuses are gonna be inflamed for like a whole day and my face is gonna look swollen and I'm gonna hate looking at myself <laughs> but it's worth it I guess I, that reminds me to take my allergy medicine um and we've now been on for an hour and a half that's insane <laughs> um with that I think um it's time to say goodbye to YouTube folks and um Twitch folks, you stick around, um, for something or whatever, uh, la la la, that's my script now for ending, ending the YouTube portion of the stream, but remember, if you support me on Patreon, you will have access to this part of the VOD that only people here on, with me on Twitch get to enjoy because they're here live and filling up the space and connecting in person. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. But yes, bye bye, YouTubes. Bye bye. And uh, Twitch people, stick around.